All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. Welcome back to New Wine Congregation of Israel. All right, today we're going to get into a little bit of prophecy. We're going to go over the book of Daniel, uh, specifically chapter 9. We're going to deal with the 70 weeks that Daniel prophesied about. Let me explain what that means. Most High willing, this is an edifying lesson. Give all honor and glory to the Most High God through the name of his son, Yahweh Shah. All right, so let's get into it. Daniel, 70 weeks. Let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. So Daniel, 70 weeks. Uh, you have scholars that have different viewpoints about it. Um, I'm going to give uh, the understanding that I have about it. I'm going to do my best. All right. I'm going to try to go, of course, precept upon precept. So when you're looking at Daniel in the 70 weeks, I'm sharing my screen. All right, cool. When you look at Daniel in the um, 70 weeks, this is dealing with a time period approximately from 420 BC to 70 AD. All right. And I'll explain why I'm saying that as we get through the lesson. All right. But before we go to Daniel, let's start out in Jeremiah. We are already there. Jeremiah chapter 25. And we're going to read verse, start at verse eight, because Jeremiah prophesied he was a prophet that foretold what would actually be going on in daniel all right when you read daniel you get into daniel daniel says that he got the understanding about the time period based on what De jeremiah wrote all right based on what jeremiah wrote down all right so let's go there jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 8 it says thus saith thus saith yahweh of hosts because ye have not heard my words Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith Yahweh, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. All right. So notice right off the bat, he saw he's calling Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, his servant. Why? Nebuchadnezzar was a wicked king. All right. But at the same time, wicked kings do the will of the Most High at times. Right. You got to understand the Most High created good and evil. All right. Let's get this real quick. And Psalms, Psalms chapter 17 and verse 13. All right, it says, Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked. Right, so he says, Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the wicked of the earth, the wicked kings of the earth are like the belt of the most high he uses them to discipline and chastise his people all right even though they're wicked all right no, everything the most high is in control of everything that's what you got when you as you get to know the most high you're going to understand that he is in control of all things let me get this precept in proverbs nobody just does anything everything is already written that's what makes it and that's sometimes that could be tough to fathom all right, let's get this real quick in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24. We use this scripture a lot. It says, a man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So you didn't just, if, you, if you're in the truth now, you didn't just stumble across the video or the brother out on the streets teaching or your family member that's in the truth. You didn't just come across this truth by happen chance. Everything there's no such thing as coincidence. A man's goings, a man's and a woman's goings are of the Lord. That's why he say, How can then how can a man then understand his own way? You can't really understand that could be tough to fathom, right? Let's go to the next chapter concerning the king, right? Proverbs 21 and 1. It says, The king's heart is the, the king's mind, right? That's your heart. The king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. All right. So you King Nebuchadnezzar didn't just he didn't come up with the idea to come and uh take Israel into captivity on his own. That was of the most high. That was the most high's will for that to happen like that. All right. So let's go back. So that's why it says, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, because he's doing and bringing forth the will of the most high. The Most High used Jeremiah to prophesy that he would come before he came. Now, the Most High is making sure that his word does not fail. And he brought Nebuchadnezzar against the children of Israel, right? It says, um, and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them 
and make them an astonishment and an hissing and perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom, right? Because the bride, the way we got married back then, the uh, the bride would be usually what our weddings took place at nighttime, all right? They usually took place in the middle of the night and the bride didn't know when the bridegroom was going to come. He just came, he came through the city and he would shout, you know, give a loud shout to let her and everybody know that he was coming to take his wife. All right. It said, so he was going to take the voice of the bridegroom away and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. All right. That's symbolic going into how we used to um, keep the menorah lit in the temple. He was going to take that away. All right. It says, and this whole land and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. All right, 70 years. So this is the first time this proph prophecy uh, was written about. All right, it says we would serve Babylon for 70 years. Jeremiah wrote about that thing. All right, um, let me see, let me see. It's another one that I wanted to get that I didn't write down. Uh, hold on real quick. I might not get, if I can't just find it, I'm not going to worry about it. Because it's one that calls him the destroyer of the Gentiles. Oh, let me see. Yeah, Jeremiah 4. I was almost there. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 7. All right, let's get that. All right, it says, The lion is come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He is gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. And thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. So a lot of times you have brothers that teach that this is talking about Yahweh Shah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. This is talking about uh, Nebuchadnezzar. They see the word lion and they say, oh, that's talking about the king. Well, this particular scripture is not talking about Yahweh Shah. This is talking about Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Because the symbol, the animal that represented Babylon was a lion. When you go look at ancient um, depictions of Babylon, they had lions and winged lions all over the uh, place. So this is talking about Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. The lion has come up from his thicket. The destroyer of the Gentiles is Nebuchadnezzar. All right. So now from there, let's go to Daniel. Now let's go to Daniel. 70 weeks. This was talked about by Jeremiah first. So we're going to go to Daniel. We're going to start at verse 20. All right. It says, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before Yahweh, my God, for the holy mountain of my God, yea, while I was speaking in prayer. Even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. All right. So Daniel was praying and Gabriel appeared. All right. Gabriel is an angel. All right. He's not a man. That's how you know he's an angel, because he said he was flying swiftly. He said the man Gabriel, but he's actually a spiritual entity. All right. He looked like a man, but he was not a regular man because he wouldn't have been flying. All right. So Daniel was uh, praying. All right. He said uh, during the evening oblation. All right. Daniel prayed all the time. Let's go real quick to uh, First Thessalonians. It's important to pray often, man. Uh, sometimes you can get 
caught up in whatever you're doing and you can forget to pray. But this is uh, wisdom. First Thessalonians 5 and 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray all the time, as much as you are, as you can. Uh, morning, evening, and uh, morning, afternoon, and evening, you know, if you uh, if your day allows so, or you just make that time in your day. All right. So let's go back to Daniel. Daniel was praying. All right. Uh, verse 22, it says, and he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. All right. So he was going to give Daniel more understanding of the times that he was living in and of the scriptures. All right. Understand that, brothers and sisters. Uh, no man knows everything. If you ever run into a brother that said they got 100 percent breakdowns of the whole Bible, that brother probably uh, telling a lie. You know, nobody understands everything. Daniel, he, where the uh, scripture uh, say, art thou wiser than Daniel? Talking about the king of Assyria, if I'm not mistaken. You know, like, art thou wiser than Daniel? Daniel got understanding from the Most High. But even when you read Daniel, he didn't even understand everything that the Most High showed him. All right. So that comes, the understanding comes from the Most High God. All right. Let's get there real quick. And Sarah. Chapter 39. Because you can read, 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 and study and study, but you're not going to get the understanding until the most high is ready for you to. All right. Whether he gives that to you directly or he reveals it to you to uh through a brother or um someone that's learned. All right. So Let's read, let's start at verse five. That Sirach 39 and verse five says he will give his heart to resort, resort early to the Lord that made him. All right. And will pray before the most high and will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. That's what we've seen Daniel doing. All right. When you start at verse one and read on down, this is like giving you the spiritual blueprint for growth. All right. A lot of brothers want to know how to learn precepts, how to, um, how to get knowledgeable in the scriptures, how to get understanding. Read Sirach chapter 39, start at verse one. It gives you, the first thing it tells you to do is to give your mind to the laws of God because you can't get understanding if you're in sin. So you need to understand what the laws are so that you can correct the sin that you may be in. Then the Most High will start to give you more understanding, right? It's going to say it. It says, so he will give his heart, he will give his heart to resort early to the, the Lord that made him, meaning you'll start to pray and thank the most high God as soon as you wake up in the morning, right? It says, verse six, when the great Lord will it, when, when Yahweh will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding. So you can't get that. It don't matter how many videos you watch, how many chapters you read. You can't get the understanding of this, of this Bible until the most high is ready for you too, right? He shall pour out wise sentences and give thanks to Yahweh in his prayers, because you know that you only have that understanding because the Most High gave it to you, all right? And that's what we see happening with Daniel, all right? In verse 22, it says, and he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give the skill and understanding, all right? He gave Daniel skill and understanding. Let's get another precept. Let's get... uh. Because he's saying a lot right there. If you read that and say, oh, he gave Daniel understanding of the scriptures. But understanding is, is a very deep matter in the Bible. All right. James chapter one and verse five, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Yahweh that give it to all men liberally and abrade it not. It shall be given him. All right. So if you don't understand or if you lack understanding, ask the most high God. All right. I got to do it. What is understanding? Because <laughs> a lot of you might think that understanding is the ability to know something or whatever uh, Webster says. But the Bible gives us the definition for understanding. What is understanding? Job chapter 28 in verse 28, it says, and unto man, he said, behold, the fear of Yahweh, that is wisdom. So to fear the most high it is wisdom. That's the definition, the biblical definition of wisdom. All right. It says, and to depart from evil 
is understanding. All right. So to know how to walk away from sin, to know how to see good and evil and choose the good rather than the evil is understanding. So he was giving Daniel more ability to be able to do that. All right, let's go back. He said, and give the skill to be able, the ability to apply the scriptures and understanding, the ability to shoot evil, as it says in Job uh, chapter one. All right, so let's keep reading. It says, at the beginning of my of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee. So when he started praying, he, Gabriel said, from the, when you started making your supplication, the Most High gave me the commandment to go and speak, come and speak to you. He said, for thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. All right, so he's going to get into the vision now, right? He says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So he said a whole lot right there. All right, 70 weeks. Let's deal with that first. What you got to understand is a lot of people only use the precept that says a day is a thousand years. And whenever they see a day, they apply a thousand years to try to calculate that. Well, the Most High uses different equations in the Bible for calculating time. All right. In this instance, what you're going to come to find out is he's uh, using a day for a year. All right. First off, let's go to Hosea. Because the Most High speaks to us in visions. A lot of times you'll read stuff in the Bible, uh, Revelation, uh, Acts chapter 10, um, Daniel, uh, these men, second Ezra, these brothers had visions. All right, Hosea chapter 12 and verse number 10. All right, it says, I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophet. So a similitude is using one thing to compare it to another thing, all right? Like he used beasts to compare those to nations or men, all right? Um, statues to compare, like uh, Daniel chapter two, he used a statue to compare um, different eras, all right? Different um, uh, metals to compare different eras. Similitudes is using one thing and as being a similar something similar to another thing all right so that's how the most high does and, and reveals things to the prophets all right so now let's deal with the day uh day for a year let's go to numbers let's go to the book of numbers chapter 13 and we're gonna read verse 25 all right it says and they returned this is dealing with um when joshua and uh, when they when they sit when Moses sent Joshua and the other brothers out into the land to spy out the land, right? It says, and they returned from searching the land after forty days. All right, it says, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So they went out and searched out the land for 40 days. All right, keep that in mind. Let's go to the next chapter, chapter 14 and verse 34. They searched the land for 40 days. All right, it says after the, so if you know anything about the story, um, only only uh, Joshua and Caleb weren't, weren't scared. All right, the other men that went to search the land, they was scared and they brought back an ill report to Moses about what was going on in the land. All right, so this was the result of it. It says, after the number of days which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. So the most I said, for every day that y'all spent, Looking at this land, being scared, I'm going to make y'all wander around this wilderness for that many years, 40 years, a day for a year. All right, let's get another example. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 4. 
in verse six. All right, it says, and when thou, uh, let me see, I want to start. Yeah, we could read verse six. It says, and when thou has accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. All right, so you see here the Most High uses that to explain, you know, he uses different mathematical equations to explain time. There's a thousand years to a day. You got a day for a year. All right. And um, there may be some of these are the ones that I'm aware of. All right. So. I'm not going to try to act like I know everything. Some brothers will get up and try to act like they just know uh, every single thing. I don't know. I know what I know based on when the most High shows me or when he shows the uh, the, the elders that I've been uh, that I've had the opportunity to learn from. All right. So I'm just I'm just a messenger. All right. All right. So let's. uh. So what you got here is it says 70 weeks, right? If you apply a day for a year for 70 weeks, that equals 490 years. All right. You can do the math. All right. Do the math at your own time. A day for a year. If you got 70 weeks, then that would equal 490 years, 490 years. All right. So let's go back to Daniel chapter 20 uh nine and verse 24 all right he says 70 weeks are determined or 490 years are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy all right, so we did with seven. We dealt with seventy weeks. Now it says, "Are to are determined to to thy people and upon the holy city." Meaning, for four hundred and ninety years, Israel is going to be in captivity from the time of uh, Daniel. All right, from the time of Daniel, they're going to spend four hundred and ninety years in captivity from the time till until until the anointing of the Most Holy comes. All right, it says to finish the transgression. All right, to finish the transgression. Let's go to First John. Let's deal with that. First, uh, not First John. John. Let's deal with finish the transgression. John chapter nineteen and verse thirty. What is it going into? All right, what you're gonna come to find out is the seventy weeks is a prophecy about Yahweh Shah coming being born and dying for the sins of israel making reconciliation right he was he's the propitiation for our sins so just to give it away that's what daniel's in the 70 weeks is talking about yahweh shah coming and dying all right this is how we know this is a true book you know there's no other book that could prophecy with this kind of pinpoint accuracy all right so this is what this is dealing with to finish the transgressions Salaki, John chapter 19 and verse 30. It says, and when Yahweh therefore had received the vinegar when he was up on the cross, it says, he said, it is finished. All right. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So he was saying that my mission here, the thing that I have been sent here to do is finished. All right. Let's go from there. Let's go to Luke chapter 21. Dealing with the transgression. Luke chapter 21 and verse 22. All right, it says, for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. All right, so the Most High was, was getting vengeance on the children of Israel for all the whoredom, the spiritual whoredom that they did, that all things must be fulfilled. This is going also into the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Sometimes we read Deuteronomy 28 and think, it only happened uh, from 1619 on to present day. Well, they were experiencing these curses even then, even during the time of Yahweh Shah. All right. We would experience these curses over and over. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let me get this precept to, under to explain that. Uh, second Ezra. 
Second Ezra chapter five and verse 40. The Most High deals with us like this. Oh, not Ecclesiastes, Second Ezra chapter five and verse 42. All right, he says this, he says, and he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring, like as it, like there is no slackness of the last, even so there is no swiftness of the first. So when the Most High judges us, it's like a ring. It continues until he says it's over with. It's been accomplished. It is finished. All right. So now let's go back. So all things had to be fulfilled concerning Israel at that time. All right, let's go back to Daniel 9, verse 24. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression until Yahweh would die, right? And to make an end of sins, right? To make reconciliation for iniqu iniquity, reconciliation, reconciliation. How was reconciliation made before Yahweh came? Let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 45 and verse 17. How was we making reconciliation before under the old covenant? All right. It says, and it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feasts. So we every all, all the high holy days we made offerings. All right, and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths and in all solemnities of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. Why? To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So that's the way it was done under the old covenant. All right, how about the new covenant? Let's go to Hebrews. He said to make reconciliation. 70 weeks would be determined. Because you got to understand that we were cast away, especially Northern Kingdom. The only thing Southern Kingdom had over Northern Kingdom, the Jews, was that they were still making sacrifices and offerings, but they were wicked as well. All right. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 17. It says, Wherefore in all things it, it beloved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be mer a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Yahweh. So Yahweh Shah is now our high priest, and he did this, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So instead of the, how the high priest in um, the old covenant would take the animal, he would be the one who killed the animal, who would pour, put the blood on the altar and sent up the burnt offering to the Most High. Well, this high priest, Yahweh Shah, he offered up himself on the altar, all right, and made reconciliation for us, all right? So it says, uh, so that's how we made reconciliation. That's how we made reconciliation now under Yahweh Shah. So let's go back to Dan. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation, Yahweh Shai coming and dying, offering himself up, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy, all right, so the vision and the prophecy would be sealed up, all right, for a time, for a good while, they would not understand all the things in this Bible, that's why when Yahweh Shai came, they would ask him so many questions. They were like, it was asking um John, was he was he the Messiah? Was he uh was he um Elijah? They was asking these questions because at that time we have more understanding now than they do than they did back then. All right, let's go to Daniel. We're gonna go back to Daniel 9. I just don't want to lose my spot in verse 24. So I'm gonna open it up in another Bible. Daniel 12. And verse four, all right, it says, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. So we're in a time where the knowledge is the most increased. We understand the scriptures better now than they ever did. 
because the he said until the time of the end until the time of the end we in the time of the end now he said many shall run to and fro a lot of people going to be toting this bible back and forth trying to get the understanding but the book would be sealed especially the book of daniel with these deep prophecies in it all right ezra's had things explained to him that that daniel didn't even understand that was showed to him all right so that's how the most high do he, when you daniel and the book of revelation and second ezra's they go together these books all go together he showed daniel something then he showed john the revelator something in it and gave even more detail all right we'll do um most high willing um some breakdown on the book of revelation as well all right so let's go back to daniel 9 all right so now we understand a little bit more that's all in this verse right we're gonna make our way all the way to verse uh the last verse 27 and explain the 70 weeks so we still on verse 24 it says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon 70 weeks 490 years are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression all right to make an end of sins to finish the transgression to finish the judgment that god has prophesy against us for our transgression to and to make reconciliation of sins for to satisfy the judgment of the most high to make reconciliation for iniquity yahweh dying for us right and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy to seal up the book to the time of the end the end time started when yahweh died that was the start of the last days, all right? The start of the last day. It says, and to anoint the most holy, to anoint the most holy. Let's go to Acts to explain that. To anoint the most holy. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. All right, it says, how Yahweh anointed Yahweh of Nazareth all right with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for Yahweh was with him so the anointed is Yahweh Shah all right the anointed is Yahweh Shah all right so let's go to Daniel 9 and 25 the most holy. so when it says and to anoint the most holy to anoint Yahweh Shah. He's the most holy. All right. Let's so now let's go to verse 25. It says, Now therefore, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, that's key. We're going to explain that unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, seven weeks, and three score and two weeks. All right, the street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. All right. <laughs> so let's explain that. Hold on. 70 weeks. All right. 70 weeks. So it says seven weeks. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah shall be seven weeks. So Seven weeks, if you do a day for a year, I got it written down, it's going to be 49 years. Seven weeks, a day for a year is going to be 49 years, okay? 49 years, all right? It says, and three score, three score is 60, all right? And two weeks, so that's 62 weeks. So you got seven weeks plus 60 weeks plus two weeks, all right, which is 60, 62 plus seven, that's 69, right? That's 69 weeks that you got there. So 69 weeks, if you apply a day for a year, is 483 years, all right? 483 years 62 weeks is you can you know i don't know if y'all like math or whatever but 
if you write that down and add it all up, a day for a year, 60, 70 weeks plus three score weeks, like it's saying here, which is 60 weeks and two weeks, that's 62 weeks. So seven weeks plus 62 weeks is 69 weeks. 69 weeks with the equation of a day for a year would be a would be 483 years. All right. So that's 69 weeks. But you might say we're dealing with 70 weeks. We're going to get that last week. All right. Just be patient with me. All right. So he said from the going forth of the commandment, he said that's how much time it's going to be from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. It's going to be 49 weeks. It's going to be 483 weeks, 483 years from the time the commandment to restore Jerusalem goes for to the time of the Messiah. It's going to be 483 years. That's what he just told Daniel. He said, and the street shall be built again in the wall because Jerusalem was destroyed. When Babylon came and Assyria was coming every three years and, and drowning up people, that was 483 years that took place. It was a long time that Jerusalem laid desolate. All right. So let's break this thing down. Let's go from the going forth of the commandment. Let's go to the first Ezra. Let's go to first Ezra. He said, from the going forth, from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. When did this happen? Let's go to first Ezra. I mean, Ezra. Ezra chapter one and verse two. So the king that was ruling during this time was Cyrus, right? Cyrus's proclamation, all right? This is, this is the feet of the, this is the uh, bear in, Dan in Daniel chapter two. This is the bear that Daniel seen, all right? It represented the, uh, Persians and the Medes, all right. That's the bear in the vision, and um, yeah, this the best. That's the bear. Yep, that's the bear. All right. So he said, from the time the proclamation went forth, let's read verse one. He says, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of Yahweh by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. Yahweh stir up the spirit of the of Cyrus, king of Persia. So you see that that's like we read in Proverbs twenty one. The hand, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. The Most High stirred up King Cyrus's spirit. He didn't just come up with that uh, thought on his own. It's because it was to accomplish the will of the Most High that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing. For you, sex is only uh, is marriage, brothers. Things that are serious get put down in writing. They ain't just you ain't just saying nothing. It get puts in, it gets put in writing. All right. So he put it in writing. This is a legal document that King Cyrus made so that we could go back and build up our city. Right. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, Yahweh, God of heaven, and God of heaven have given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And have and have charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. All right. So this is the time of the proclamation going forth. All right. This was around 420 BC. All right. This is around 420 BC when this proclamation went forth. All right. So you got some scholars that say 421, 422. Um, but 420 is right, is, is the best approximation for when because the reason why they're saying that is because you when you get when you're dealing with BC and AD, BC before the common era, AD, um, after the death of Yahweh Shah, right? There is no year zero. There is no year zero. You have to take that into account. It goes, it counts down from BC 420 on down. And there is no year zero. I wish I had a timeline I could show y'all up here. But there is no year zero. Like we learned in math, there was a timeline, negative numbers. Then you got zero, then a positive number. It's not how it works with time. All right. So when you look at, for instance, when you see things like 
uh the third century ad that's really the the 200s of the years that's not the 300s of the years all right that's just how that's just how we measure time all right but understand that the most important thing to get out of that is that the decree went forth here in daniel 9 this decree going forth was at 420 bc so he said from 420 bc to the time of the messiah it's going to be 483 years that pass by all right 483 years so what captivity did you have was Israel in between Persia and the Messiah? You had the Greek captivity, and then you had the Roman captivity, all right? So two captivities was between that, all right? 70 AD is when Rome came into Jerusalem and, and destroyed the temple, and Rome stayed in power to 193 AD, all right? 193 AD, all right? So let's go back. It said, oh, yeah, we here already, Daniel 9. So it says, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment by King Cyrus, you can read about that in um, Ezra, all right, and in um, Ezra and in First Ezra, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit. It goes into more detail about what was going on. All right, it says, from that time to the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score in two weeks the street and the the street shall be built again all right and the wall even in troublous times the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous time now let's go to first Ezra to explain what that's talking about the street and the wall shall be built again because when we were when even though king cyrus gave us the the, the decree and the papers to go and do this rebuilding we had quite a bit of opposition all right the other nations were hindering the work when we start trying to build up israel again build up jerusalem we start getting opposition it's the same way we get opposition today all right we get the police called on us ran off of, uh corners for for simply standing outside and reading the bible but people can march and hold up signs and say how they want to be able to uh, commit murder against the fetuses that's in their body. You can literally go out and stand in front of the courthouse and protest the right to be able to have abortion, but you can't read the Bible without getting the police called on you. These, that, that's been quite a bit of my experience. All right. So we in those signs. It's the thing that is, is done is the thing that will be done, as uh, Solomon put it. All right, first Ezra chapter five. And we're going to go to verse 71. All right, to explain the street and the wall built in troublous times. All right, it says we ourselves alone. So I start at verse. Uh, Let's read verse 66 on down. It says, wherefore, when the enemies of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin heard it, they came to know what that noise of trumpet should mean. All right. So we sounded the trumpet because we was getting ready to start building again. All right. It says, and they perceived that they were of the captivity and they perceived that they that were of the captivity did build the temple of Yahweh of of the Lord God of Israel, Yahweh. And so they went to Zerubbabel and Jesus, right? Yahweh, Joshua, it says, and to the chief of the families and said to them, we will build together with you. So the heathen, our enemies started saying, we will build together with y'all, all right? That's the same way you have in any, um, any movement that the Israelites have tried to do in the past when you had... Uh, the Million Man March on uh, the Capitol during the time of Malcolm X, right? They, they, you started seeing, they realized that they, Mar Malcolm X gave an uh, interview about that. He said the Million Man March didn't achieve the results that they wanted it to achieve because the enemies of us, the so called uh, Edom, the Edomites and the, uh, other nations, they wanted to stop that march. 
but they knew they couldn't stop a million men from going out in the streets and walking. So instead of trying to physically stop them, what they did was they joined the march. They started marching with us, saying, yeah, right on, brother. We, we're we brothers. You deserve rights, too. But that that's not what we needed, right? He's, uh, Malcolm X put it a brilliant way. He said, he said, if you got a cup of coffee that's too black and too strong to drink, what do you do? You weaken it by pouring cream into the coffee. And if you pour enough cream into that coffee, eventually it'll not only be strong, but you won't even be able to taste the coffee. It'll lose its flavor completely. And that's what you see happening. That's why now, even within the Israelite movement that we have going on today, you have uh, Edomites that are trying to join into the movement, saying that they're Israel. You even got Israelites that are starting to teach that there were Edomites on them slave ships, right? That's going because what's going to happen if, if is if you start if that doctrine, of course, that doctrine is not going to prevail because it's not biblical. But with that type of teaching, once you start to say that there were Edomites on those slave ships, then you can no longer prove that we are the Israelites. Now you can't prove that we are the Israelites. You got brothers that teach that, um, that literally go out and teach that Israel is not under the curses, that they're under the blessings. Well, if we're not under the curses, then that means that slavery on ships didn't happen. That's why they're trying to take that out of the schools. Critical race theory. They're taking that from being taught in the schools. They want to start the history of the so-called African-American around the time of Martin Luther King. All right. Because if you teach that we went into slavery on them slave ships, then that is going to align with the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And they can't have that. So they're trying to infiltrate what we're doing. And a lot of it, the help is being given to them at the hand of Israel. It's always been that way. Even when you read in the, in the Maccabees during the time of the Greeks. All right. You had men of Israel who were going out to the Greeks that didn't want to do a forward, basically being difficult in the in the progression of Israel growing. All right. They were forward in their thinking, as it says, and they went out and aided the Greeks, aided our oppressors. And that's the same thing you have going on today. All right. So I'm reading it again. Verse 67, it says, and they perceived that they were of the captivity, that they that were of the captivity did build the temple of Yahweh. All right, of Israel. So they went to Zerubbabel and Joshua, Jesus, and to the chief of the families and said unto them, we will build together with you. For we likewise, as ye do, do obey your God, your Lord, and do sacrifice unto him from the days of Asbarazah, as, as, a, as Bazar, the king of Assyria, all right, who brought us hither. So you had heathen nations saying that we sacrifice to God too. We'll build with y'all. What does Zerubbabel say? He said, then Zerubbabel and Yahawashah, well, not Yahawashah, uh, Jesus, this is Joshua. It says, the chief of the families of Israel said unto them, it is not for us, it is, it is not for us and you to build together and house unto the Lord our God. We ourselves will build our loan will build unto the Lord of Israel, according as Cyrus, the king of the Persians, hath commanded us. So they said, nah, we don't need y'all help. We, we, we don't, it don't matter that y'all been doing sacrifices to the Most High. Y'all ain't, excuse me, y'all are not a part of what we're doing over here. You're not building with us, all right? It says, but, but the heathen of the land lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and holding them straight hindered their building you see what they did once they said we said that y'all can't build with us they started hindering the building they gonna always show their true colors like the scriptures say their words are smooth as butter but wars in their heart wars what's in their mind they really want to destroy you they really are they always want to destroy you that's why a lot of times at camp when i first came into the truth and i was going out and teaching you know i wasn't um so gracious I would see what would appear to me look, that looked like an Edomite. And, you know, it was just you, you were Edomite. You know, I could see the blood through your skin. I'm pretty sure about it, you know, but I had to um, realize that 
Israel comes in all shades. You know, there are some brothers in Northern Kingdom that if you didn't know any better, you you would you would say that was an Edomite just because of the the fairness and the complexion of their skin. So when those people, when people that look like that come up to me at camp, what I do now is I give them the benefit of the doubt. I give them the, if they say, well, I'm um, I'm like, well, for instance, I say you see yourself on the sign because they come, they usually come up and they're they're curious about what we're doing. And if they say, yeah, they say most of the time, nine times out of 10, what they're going to say is that they're Indian. They got Indian in their blood or whatever the case. And so I have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Even if I even if I feel like, man, this is an Edomite, this is a Caucasian, I have to give them the benefit of the doubt because I don't want to be guilty of not doing that. One thing about it, though. This Bible is undefeated. This Bible is undefeated. And all and once we get to reading the Bible, the truth always comes out. The truth always comes out, man. So <laughs> I don't know why I went on that whole tangent, but the point of it is this is what it was talking about. Uh, it would be the street and the wall would be built in troublous times because the heathen, the other nations would start to make it difficult for us to build. Right, it says, but the heathen of the land lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and holding them straight hindered their building. That's like if we you try to get a school to teach the people, you're gonna have they gonna give you trouble with building permits. We can't we can't even hardly teach on the street. Say you need a permit for that to teach on the street. You can't go and hand out flyer. They say that's soliciting, which is not soliciting because we ain't selling nothing. But they hint, they always try to hinder the building. And a lot of times it's even some of our people who help who help hinder. All right. Verse 73, it says, by their secret plots and popular persuasion. What's popular persuasion? They a hate group. Uh they uh do hate speech. They don't love everybody. It says, and commotion, they hindered the finishing of the building all the time that Cyrus, King Cyrus lived. So the whole, Cyrus gave the decree, but the whole time he lived, they hindered it. They made it hard for us. It says, so they were hindered from building this from the space of two years until the reign of Darius. All right. We was hindered that long, man. Hindered that long. All right. So, uh. Matter of fact, let me go to Nehemiah and show you what I mean, how even wicked Israelites uh, try to stop us from building. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 6. And we're going to read verse 10 through 14. All right, so it said, Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Del Del Deliah, Dalia, the son of Mahitabel, who was shut up, and he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee, yea, in the night will they come to slay thee, All right, so this brother was scared, he was telling Nehemiah, look, let's, let's meet in the temple, right, he said, and I should, and I said, should such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life because Nehemiah was no punk, all right? He put hands on people for breaking the laws of the Most High. He said, I will not go in. And lo, I perceive that Yahweh had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him, all right? They had hired, Tobiah and Sambalot had hired this brother. All right, these are uh, heathens. All right, it says, therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin and that they might have matter of evil and evil report that they might reproach me. But he said, but my, my God, think upon, think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalot according to these their works. And on the prophetess, Noadiah is a little a female prophetess in the midst. All right. And the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. All right, so these brothers was trying to put Nehemiah in fear to hinder him from building. All right, we cannot have that spirit of fear amongst us, man. Can't have that spirit of fear amongst us. 
So that's that's what the Bible is talking about here. It says, from the going forth, know therefore and understand that from the going forth and the, of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, four hundred and eighty three years. The street shall be built again, even and the wall, even in troublous times. We were going to be rebuilding the temple, even in the midst of them hindering the building. All right. That's what that's talking about. All right. It says. Um, until the Messiah, until the Messiah, let's deal with that. Until the Messiah. John. Chapter one. And verse 41. It says, he first finded his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. All right. So the Messiah is Yahweh Shah. All right. So that lets you know what the time period from the time Cyrus 420 BC, from the time he gave that commandment, y'all can go back home and build y'all temple until the Messiah was going to be 483 years. The Messiah, the Prince. All right. In troublous times. All right. So we dealt with troublous times. Uh, uh, oh, so like it. Let me get my. Let me get my charge real quick. I'll be right back. It's lucky. All right. So we dealt with uh, in troublous times. That was during the time of Ezra. You read about that in Ezra chapter four, Nehemiah, how they were having um, trouble being hindered in the building of the temple. All right. Let's see. All right. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Did I get some? I feel like I missed some. Oh, no, nah, that's it. Yeah, let's keep going. Verse 26. It says, after three score and two weeks, so after 62 weeks or after 434 years, all right, after 434 years, after 60 and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. All right, shall Messiah be cut off. Let's deal with that. So Messiah died. A lot of people teach that. He died in 33 AD. But like I said, there is no year zero. All right. There is no year zero. So you have to understand that that's, a pro I'm going to say, approximately 30 AD. All right. 30, 30, 31 AD, because there is no year zero. Okay. There is no year zero on the map, on the timeline. So. Let me, get, let me deal with the Messiah being cut off. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 10. All right, it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. This is a prophecy about Yahweh Shah being cut off. It says he hath put him to grief. Right. It's why does it say he, it pleased him? Because we pissed the Lord off. So the Messiah dying, Yahweh Shah dying is what satisfied the Most High's anger towards us. Right. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So, like, so it was the pleasure of the Lord to cut off the Messiah. 
all right because we sin all right so the, the it, that that's what had to be done let's go to acts it had to be done his own son that was the only sac sacrifice that would suffice for the lord's anger towards us acts chapter 5 and verse 31 it says and him him hath god exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sin so him dying was for israel it was not for everybody all right it was not for the whole wide world repentance and him dying was for israel those are the only people who can repent because you repent from what sins what is sin the transgression of the law who was the law given to the israelites psalms 147 and verse 19 he showed his word to jacob i mean it's, 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 it's plain to understand if you want to understand it. All right, so let's go back. All right, it says, after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come, that, sh that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. All right, so it's a lot in there. Let's deal with and the people, and the people of the prince. Let's go to John chapter 11. And the people of the prince. John chapter 11 and verse 47. Uh, chapter 11 and verse 47. Yeah, it's a lot. And the people of the prince that shall come. All right, verse 47, it says, Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council. And said, what do we for this man do with many miracles? All right. So this is the conspiracy to kill Yahweh Shah. All right. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans, all right, the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. All right. So the Romans who was ruling at this time was uh, Titus and Vespasian. All right. Those were the people who were ruling Rome. All right. So it says they going to come and take away our place and our nation. They were who allowed these wicked Pharisees to even be over us at this time. The only because you got to know this about Rome. Rome, what made Rome different from all the other empires was. uh, All the other empires like Persia, the Persians and the Medes, they wanted everybody to do what they were doing. They were, all right, Babylon, they wanted you to worship their God, all right? Persians and the Medes, they wanted all nations to be one. They wanted everybody to worship their God, one religion. Greeks, uh, same thing. You couldn't do your religion. You had to not be, profess yourself a Jew, all right? Rome was different in that. Rome was like, look, we accept everybody religion. Just worship our gods. As long as you ain't saying we can't worship our, as long as you ain't telling everybody not to worship what we doing, you can have your God, which is a conflict of interest when you're keeping the commandments of the most high God, because we can't worship nothing but the most high. We can only worship the most high the way he says to worship. It. All right. So that's why they saying this about Yahweh Shah. If we let him, because Yahweh Shah was a nationalist. He was trying to bring Israel back together, right? That's why they say if we let if we leave him alone, all men gonna believe on him because he was teaching that yeah that the northern kingdom could come back into the fold, they could come back to God and be reconciled through his death, all right? If we leave him alone, all men gonna believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation, all right? It said so. That's the people of the prince. All right, that was going to come. All right, let's go back and Daniel and read it again. It says, for him to be cut off and the people of the prince that shall come and destroy the city 
and the sanctuary. The people who came in, the, the people of the prince that came and destroyed the city and the sanctuary was the Romans in 70 AD. All right. Titus and Vespasian. All right. That, that's it's like, that's not who was ruling at the time of Yahweh, but that's who came and destroyed the city. Titus and Vespasian. All right, let's go to uh, First Peter, because this is what these brothers were talking about. All right, these scriptures have dual meaning, but initially when they wrote this, this is what it was talking about. First Peter chapter four and verse seven, it was talking about at this time initially. All right, First Peter four and seventeen it said, "For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first began at us." What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? All right. So that's they, these brothers was trying to warn everybody. Look, the most high is going to judge us. Desolation and destruction is getting ready to come to our people. All right. They was trying to warn them. All right. Let's go to. um. Let's go to Luke from there. Show you something real quick. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. All right, it says, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. So he's telling them, he's explaining what Daniel was saying right here. All right, he's explaining this to them because they didn't understand it. Like I said, seal, he told Daniel to seal up the book to the time of the end. Back then, they did not understand Daniel fully right he said when, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies the Roman armies know that the desolation thereof is not he said then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains the mountains of Africa deeper into Africa and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries they're in it, countries entered there into why the people who lived on the outskirts of Jerusalem he said don't they don't need to come in here because why? Because people who didn't live in Jerusalem came to Jerusalem for the feast days. You had to come to Jerusalem back then. All right. He said they don't need to come here at that time. He said, for these be the days of vengeance. All right. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. The things written in uh, the Deuteronomy 28, the curses. All right. These things would be fulfilled. Some of these things would be fulfilled at this time. All right. So. You got to understand the thought process of the, of the brothers at this time. They were thinking that the most that Yahweh Shah was coming to save them from the vengeance, to save them from that ass whipping that the most I said he was going to get them. No, that's why he said this. See, when you when you understand why they talking the way that they are, these scriptures make sense. But when you don't read the Bible, then it's, it, you just think that. You start thinking all manner of madness. This is why he said this in Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, look, I ain't coming to stop y'all from the vengeance of the most high. You still going to go through them curses. I still got to die. I'm just laying down the foundation for y'all being brought back into this new covenant. That's all I'm doing. I'm not here to take any of that away. They they thought Yahweh Shai came to do away with the prophecies. Oh, good. The Messiah here. We ain't got to go through all that hell that Moses prophesied us to go through in, in Deuteronomy, that Isaiah prophesied about Jeremiah. He said, no, don't think that I came to destroy the law, but to fulfill. What did he come to fulfill? Let's go to Acts. Let's see what he came to fulfill. Because we read a little bit of it earlier. Acts chapter 3. In verse 18, it says, but those things which Yahweh before showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 53, all right? He, he fulfilled those things. He didn't fulfill, he didn't fulfill on me, he taking it away. He just came to keep the laws and show us how to do it, to teach us the laws and to, to die for us, all right? That's what he came to do, All right? Let's go to Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew. You got to understand the mindset of, of, of the brothers that was at this time, right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 11 
in verse one. It says, and it came to pass when Yahweh Shah made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in the prison, so John was locked up at this time, the works of Yahweh Shah, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Because he he thinking in his mind, like, dang, I'm in jail. They finna kill me. Are you actually the Messiah, or should I be looking for somebody else to come? Why, why the king? They was thinking that when the Messiah came, the kingdom was going to be established. They was in captivity, the same way we are today. So they were ready to get from under Roman captivity. They was thinking that when Messiah came, that that was going to be the start of them getting from out of that captivity. Right. He said this. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached to them. He like, look, I am the Messiah. Can't nobody else do these miracles. I'm the Messiah. Right. He said, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So he like, John, don't worry. I know you were. He like, but look. You'll be blessed if you don't worry. Don't worry. I am the Messiah. Right? It's so, man, you got to understand how, how cold that is, man. Blessed is he who shall ever not be offended in me. And John was just like cool with it. You know what I mean? John had, had a, a, a good, uh, he was in the spirit, man, more than a prophet, like they say. All right? Um, let's go to Luke. Explain some more of the mindset of what's going on. Luke chapter 19 and verse 11, right? It says, and they heard these things. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was not to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should be, should immediately appear. It, it, it That's the mindset they was in. They was like, oh, Messiah here. We finna get up out of captivity. You gotta imagine how we, it's going to be the same way. You got brothers and sisters that think that uh, when Yahweh Shah come back this second time, that we're going to blink, snap our fingers, and that it's just going to be the kingdom. It's going to be some things that take place before the kingdom is fully established on this whole earth, man. And most I will, and we'll get into that in, in future lessons when we start to get into Revelation and breaking down those chapters you can, I, uh, most I will, I'll be able to paint a better picture of how that's going to be, how that's going to take place. The Jacob's Trouble, I go into it, the Jacob's Trouble video on our page, I go into it a good bit, a good bit, but I'm going to, um, most I will, I'm going to do more video and, and kind of explain it in further detail of, of exactly how it's going to take place, what are going to be the stages of us of the kingdom being set up fully on the earth is the most hot on this to well, if you read the new testament how um how it was of us coming into the promised land is very very similar to how it's going to be the second exodus around all right the second time around is very very similar so they thought at this time when Yahweh came the kingdom was going to be set up right then he like, nah, it's not, it's not going to be right now. Let's go to Acts. This is the mindset that they was thinking. They didn't fully understand the scriptures. Acts chapter one and verse nine. All right. It says, and when he had, this is when he came back, spent, he spent 40 days with the, um with everybody. Yahweh Shai, after being raised from the dead, he spent 40 days with everybody, kicked it with them. Right, they thinking that the, the kingdom gonna be then. He said, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. A chariot, all right. It says a chariot received them. All right, it says, and while they looked steadfastly, is that what I want? I think I want a little bit earlier. Yeah, verse six. It says, when they therefore come, when they when they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom, restore again the kingdom to Israel? It, they were saying restore the kingdom again, meaning get rid of Rome. They were sick of Rome. They were being oppressed by Rome. People try to in the, in the churches a lot of times, sometimes teach that 
we was cool with Rome and now it was all good and everybody was just friends. No, we wanted to get from up under Rome. We wanted to get from up under them. He said, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father have put in his own power. I don't even know, but it ain't for y'all to know. Only the father know that, but you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you and she, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He like, look, y'all got work to do first before the kingdom get established. Y'all got to establish it. Y'all got to go and teach the people. Right. He says, and when he had spoken these things, while they behold, beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. All right, so the, the the they that's the mindset that they was thinking. All right, they was thinking that Yahweh Shah was gonna come and take away all the um prophecies concerning judgment that Israel had to go through. All right, let's go to Second Thessalonians. This is why they're writing like this in the in the New Testament. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. It says, "Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach." And by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon, soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Mashiach is at hand. He like, don't let nobody make you, if, if you get a letter from us saying that the day of Mashiach is at hand, because people was teaching that the resurrection had happened. That the second coming of Hamashiach can happen. They like, look, it has not happened yet. When he come back, you're going to know. All right. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. The falling away that it's talking about is 70 AD. There'll be a lot of us killed during 70 AD. Millions of us died. That was like a, a if I'm not mistaken, like an eight year siege that. 70 AD wasn't just one day when they when the, when Rome came and encamped against Jerusalem. That was like eight years that they seized us. They wouldn't let food come in or out. They like a lot of us started there. So it was a great falling away. All right. Great falling away. A lot of us shall fall by the sword. Let me get that real quick. Second Thessalonians. Luke chapter 21. I'm going to come back here. We just read it, matter of fact. Did we? Nah, I'm going to read it again if I did. A great falling away. You have people that teach that. That's saying uh, people leaving the church and um, leaving the faith. That's not what that's talking about. Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. It says, and they shall fall by the sword by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations slavery the transatlantic slave trade and the, the sub-saharan slave trade that's the great falling away and jerusalem shall be trodden down of the gentiles until the time of the gentiles be fulfilled meaning there were going to be heathen nations living in jerusalem like there are today that's why that's how we know that those people that's living in israel aren't the people because it said Gentiles was going to be living there. Heathens, Goyim, right? They was going to be living in there in Israel until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right, so let's go back to 2 Thessalonians. Uh, so that's the great falling away that it's talking about. All right, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And the and that man of sin, right? So the falling away, us going into slavery, right? And and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the man of sin, Esau. The whole world gonna have to realize and see that he is the man of sin. Right now, everybody want him to get into the kingdom. They want him to be saved. They want salvation for him and his people. But he got to be revealed to, to the whole world before this, the second coming of the Messiah. 
Because the whole world got to understand that this man is the devil the Bible speaks of. All right. It says who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God and that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right. This happened during uh, the Greek captivity. They set up a temple of Zeus in there. And it also happened during Roman captivity. Titus Vespusian. Um, Titus and Vespusian came and, and stood in the temple and said that he was God. And it's happening today because today we are the temple of God. But you, a lot of you still think, when you think of Jesus, you that white image, that white man, Cesare Borgia, pop in your mind. So he's sitting in your temple as God. This is a, a multifold scripture, all right? It says that's that's how we know. He's the man of sin because he sits in your mind, the temple, as God. And he shows himself as God. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Jesus. Image. Look what pop up. He, who's showing themselves as God and the son of God? Who's showing themselves as God and the son of God? You see that? So this is what it's talking about in Thessalonians. That man of sin be revealed, right? Remember ye not that, verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, right? Because you had men coming in there teaching otherwise. And now ye know that withholdeth, that now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So because they couldn't just come out and say Esau is the devil. They couldn't just say it like that. These letters had to get through checkpoints and, and get to the people. So they wrote in a way that only people who understood the Bible would understand it because they was in our schools. They was in the schools, the synagogues learning with us, right? He said for the, he said, and now you know what withholded that he might be revealed in his time. Meaning the only reason he ain't revealed right now is because it ain't time yet. The whole world don't need to know right now. Right for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. He like this man already here. He already working. Right, only he who now let it will let. The only reason he doing it and, and ain't being taken out the way is because the Most High is letting him do it until he be taken out of the way. Right, he's talking about Esau. He say, and then shall that wicked then? Why you think it's got? a capital w right there and then shall that wicked not the wicked that wicked be revealed right i'm gonna show you let me get that out the screen for y'all go nuts then shall that wicked be revealed let's go to malachi chapter one all right in verse three, it says, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom says we are impoverished. This is when they was living in the Caucasus mountains and in, the, in uh, mountains of Georgia, Russia. But we will return and build the desolate places. They was going to move into Europe during the after the dark ages and move into all them old castles that we built. That's why you got them living over there today. Thus said, how of hosts they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. The border of wickedness is meaning that they are where wickedness starts, and they are where wickedness ends. Watch. Look what the Bible say. You got brothers is trying, they bet, they, they'll say that Esau is not the so-called white man, but when they try to ju they try to justify Esau, they trying to justify him. So they 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 at the same time saying he ain't the so-called white man, but then they saying that he is because that's who he is, right? It says and it first Maccabees chapter one and verse one, and it happened that after Alexander son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius king of Persians and Medes that he reigned in his stead the first over greece so this is alexander the greek or who they call him the alexander the great 
and by and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. This is what the prophecy was in Genesis 25 that he would rule by the sword, by by his sword would he rule, right? He slew the kings of the earth and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. After these things, he fell sick. He had a venereal disease and perceived that he should die because he was a homosexual, right? Wherefore, he called his servants as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years, then died. And his servants bear rule every one in his place. After his death, they put crowns upon themselves. So did the sons after them many years. Watch this. And evils, and evils were multiplied in the earth. When these people started ruling, it say evils was multiplied in the earth. Evil got worse in the earth when the Greeks started ruling. That's why the Bible called them the border of wickedness in Malachi. Because they were wickedness starts and where it ends. They the, they the epitome of wickedness. All right. They the epitome of that thing. All right. And I want some more on that. Do I want to keep going? Let me see. Yep. And there came out of them a wicked root. Antio the Bible keep calling them the wicked, man. So that's what it's talking about. And then shall that wicked, the man, everybody going to know that Esau is the wicked. He, he responsible for the wickedness of the earth. He's the seed of the devil, right? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's a cold precept. All right. I ain't going to reel myself back in because I'm going to go on to a whole nother tangent. All right. So let's go back to Daniel. So let me see what we got. Let me see what it says. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Messiah is Yahweh but not for himself. All right. But not for himself and the people and the, of the prince that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, which is the Romans. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. All right. The end thereof shall be with the flood. Matter of fact. Mm. all right i'm gonna keep going the end there shall be with the flood a flood of people and unto the end of the war desolations are determined until the end of the siege which was about eight years they're gonna be destroying they're going to be destroying Jerusalem, right? Let's keep going. Daniel chapter 27. It says, and he shall confirm the covenant. So you people say they read the verse 26 and they say, well, that says 69 weeks. This is a 70th week right here. It says, and sh he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. All right. Confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the weeks, he shall cause the sacrifices and ob the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of the abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. All right. So causes the desolation to cease. What you got to understand is when it's talking about that is that we are, we had an agreement like we read in uh, Luke chapter 10. Um, they, they, the Pharisees was like, they're going to come and take away our place in our nation. We had an agreement with Rome to be able to make um, sacrifices and offering. They didn't, like I said, Rome didn't mind you practicing what you practice. You just couldn't speak against other people and what they was practicing. The same way America is today. It's an extension of Rome, all right? It's an extension of Rome, right? But the Romans always hated our sacrifices. Let's go to Luke. It says that they would confirm the covenant and then they would break that covenant, all right? Luke chapter 13, 
in verse one. It says, there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood, this is the point, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So we all, they always try to paint Pilate out like he was good and he didn't want Yahweh Shah to die. No, the most I just put his heart in that state that he did so that the he could be killed by his own people. But at the end of the day, ultimately, the Romans put him to death. The, the, uh, the Israel just had to be in agreement, had to force their hand. But that was the Romans killed them. They the ones who beat them. They the ones who put the, the uh put them up on that crucifix. They the ones who killed them. The Romans did. The Jews didn't kill them. The Romans killed them. All right. It says, but the point here, Pilate, Pilate took some of the blood of some Galileans and put that blood in the sacrifices in the offering of the guy of that the people was trying to make. So they always was against our sacrifices. That's what it means when it says confirm the covenant with one week. Let's go back to Daniel. It says he shall cause sacrifice. Uh, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifices and the oblations to cease. And for the overspreading of the abominations, he shall make it desolate. All right. Abominations of desolation. All right. It says, make it desolate. Uh, where am I at? And for the overspreading of the abominations, he shall make it desolate. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15. All right, it says, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. This was Titus, all right, who was Esau, who so readeth, let him understand. Then let, meaning you need to understand that I'm talking about Esau. I'm not going to just say it. I'm talking about Esau though, all right? Let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take any of the things out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to his take his clothes. Right? He said, Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. All right. For then shall great tribulation, such as not was not seen, not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor shall ever be. So, right, this is multifold once again. Uh, Matthew 24, all right? He's going into 70 AD, but he's also going into the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble, all right? That's the great tribulation. Uh, that was an eight-year seed, but we've experienced way worse um, circumstances since that. That's how we know that that's continuing on into the future, all right? So let's go back to Daniel 9. All right, so now we understand, hopefully. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's your 70th week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause sacrifices and oblations to cease, meaning they was going to break the covenant of us being allowed to continue to make sacrifices. All right, it says, and for the overspreading of the abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the con con consummation that, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate, right? Meaning we was going to get the full brunt of these curses after this point, all right? So that verse, that's verse 27. So that's the 70 weeks explained. It's the best way I can explain it. In a nutshell, in a summary, the 70 weeks was a prophecy of when, of the time of Yahweh coming and dying for us, all right? I'm going to read it again. The 70 weeks timeline is from 420 BC to 70 AD. All right. 420 BC to 70 AD. When you do the math on all that, that is 408, 490 years. All right. 490 years. So the Bible prophesied that it would be 490 years from the time of Daniel 
until the cutting off and the dying of Messiah and, and the time of Jerusalem being destroyed and sacked by the Romans once again. All right. So hopefully this has been edifying. Most high willing all praises to the most high God. All right. Um, Try to put more videos like this up going in the prophecy. Most high willing we can get into some um more of Daniel, Daniel chapter two, explaining uh the beast that he saw, the um um the statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about. Most high willing we can get into that and, and, and explain that uh for you guys on another video. So uh that's all I got for today. With that, I'm gonna say shalom. If you like videos like this, um like it. Um Drop a comment in the box below. Um, if you feel like I missed some, left some out, someone um explain clearly. You got more questions, drop it in the comment box and we'll um we'll try to explain it. All right. So all praises to the most high. Shalom.